When it comes to keeping your home energy efficient and comfortable, insulation plays a massive role. But not all insulation options are created equal. Take spray foam insulation, for example. It promises energy savings, but is it truly the hero in the carbon smart world? Or is there a hidden dark side? In this video, we'll discuss why spray foam might be harming your home's health and yours too, the fire hazard lurking in your walls, especially in wildfire zones, and eco-friendly insulation alternatives that work better for the environment and your home. Before you make any decisions, you'll want to know the full story. I'm Christina. And I'm a sustainability consultant who creates regenerative, soulful spaces. And in this series, we'll explore low carbon natural building methods to create structures that exist in harmony with the environment. Let's get started. You might be wondering, what's the deal with spray foam? Isn't it supposed to be a great option for insulation? Well, here's the thing. Spray foam does have some impressive insulating properties. It's known for being super effective air sealer and can help create a warm roof without needing extra venting. But despite these perks, spray foam isn't exactly the hero we'd hoped that it would be when it comes to environmental friendliness. And it's not a safe long-term option for a lot of homes. So why is spray foam insulation a bit of a villain in the sustainable building world? Let's dive in. First of all, the installation process for spray foam can be pretty hazardous. The chemicals used in spray foam off-gas toxic volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs, which means installers have to suit up in respirators and protective gear. They're basically working in hazmat suits. And to top it off, the buildings often need to be vacated during installation and for a few days afterwards due to bad indoor air quality. Not exactly comforting, right? Another issue is that spray foam doesn't always handle moisture very well. If it's not applied perfectly, think gaps or uneven spots, it can fail to create an airtight seal. That's when warm, humid air can sneak in and condense on those cooler surfaces, leading to water trapped inside your walls. And you know what that means, mold growth, wood rot, and a potential compromise of the building's structural integrity. Plus, mold isn't exactly a friend to indoor air quality or your health. Speaking of issues, spray foam can shrink and crack over time. The expansion of and contraction can lead to cracks, which means your supposedly airtight seal isn't so airtight anymore. It can also significantly reduce its insulating value. Pests like mice might find their way in, especially if the foam has shrunk or cracked. Now, here's the big one. A lot of spray foam is flammable. In wildfire prone areas, Spray foam is particularly risky because it can act as a fire accelerant. Tests have shown it ignites way faster than other insulation types, creating toxic vapors and heavy toxic black smoke. It has a relatively low flash point, which means that as it burns, it releases chemicals into the air and those chemicals actually catch on fire in the air. That flashpoint is the point at which the air itself ignites. Some companies do treat their spray foam with fire retardants, but I just don't think it's enough protection. Also, that's even more toxic substances that you're adding into the equation. If you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me more than you know, and it makes it a lot easier for others to find important information on building sustainable properties. Okay, back to the video. Let's not forget the environmental impact of spray foam. The production of spray foam insulation involves high embodied carbon. And once it's done serving its purpose, it takes hundreds of years to break down in the landfill. But don't worry, there are some fantastic eco-friendly alternatives out there. The natural building movement is constantly innovating and I'm super impressed by the solutions that they're creating. They seem to get better and better every year. First, let's talk about some new options for eco-friendly air barriers. Air barriers are important because we want a building that's both airtight and breathable. And when I say breathable, I mean vapor permeable. It sounds a little contradictory, I know. So what do I mean by that? I mean, it should be airtight so air isn't passing through your walls. 
and in that way you're conserving your energy. But it should allow moisture to pass through without letting moisture get trapped in the walls, and that's vapor permeability. Think of it like a piece of paper. If you blow on it, no air can get through, right? But it can absorb and release moisture. And that's what we want in an air barrier. Here are a few carbon smart air barriers I love working with. My ultimate favorite is continuous interior plaster. This is a traditional method where we apply a smooth layer of plaster on the interior walls, creating an air barrier. It's labor intensive, but worth it if you're looking for something time tested and reliable. Fluid applied air barriers. This process involves pressurizing a specific area of the building and then spraying a waterborne acrylic sealant into the pressurized space. This is essentially done after ducting, plumbing, and electrical. So any penetration in the wall system is sealed up. There are a few companies that do this. AeroSeal, I think AirShield. So just check the permeability rating before choosing one of these systems. The higher the rating, the more permeable it is. If it has a low number, that would be impermeable, then just make sure that you only have one of these in your wall system. If you have two, inside and out, you will 100% trap moisture and create mold. Aerobarrier is one of those companies that's innovating some really quality products. And I'll include links to them and other companies in the description below. One other thing Aerobarrier makes is a high-tech mist that fills gaps and cracks to create a super tight seal. It's a modern solution that offers great air tightness for your building. And lastly, high performance membranes and tapes. Brands like Sika and Proclima, they have some game changing products to seal around doors and windows and other big leaky areas. And these membranes and tapes are excellent for creating efficient wall systems. If you're using natural insulation, which I'll talk about in just a moment, you'll want to be doubly sure that the membrane or tape you use has a high permeability rating. One really cool thing about some of these products is that they can actually adjust the way the vapors move depending on the weather conditions. That's why they're called smart membranes. They can open and close in response to the weather and that helps us control humidity. Some brands that do this, uh, Certain Teens Membrane, spelled brain because it's so smart, uh, Proclima's Intello and Sega's Margex, if I'm saying that correctly. Okay, before I move on to talk about natural insulation with great R value, I wanna make one more quick note on air barriers. If you have an air barrier with low permeability rating, make sure you know your climate. They should always live on the warm side of the building. For example, in Michigan, the warm side of the building would be to the interior, especially in winter, right? But in Texas, guess where the warm side is? It's usually on the exterior. So either way, we wanna properly seal the warm side. This prevents water vapor from contacting the sheathing. Now let's talk about insulation materials with high R value. In case you're not familiar with it, an R value measures how well a material resists heat flow. The higher the R value, the better the insulation. And here are a few of my top picks. The reason some of these are my favorite is because of their low embodied carbon, and in some cases, carbon sequestration. So number one is going to be blown in cellulose. This is very common and this insulation is made from recycled paper products. It's both sustainable and effective. It's great at filling gaps and has a non-toxic treatment to reduce fire risk and deter pests. It's also very affordable and commonly used. Secondly, we have soft wood chip insulation. So I'm linking to Timber HP in the description too. They have some awesome products that are pretty cool. One of them is called Timber Bat, and it's a bat insulation made from leftover softwood chips from sustainably harvested forests. It has excellent carbon storing and sound dampening qualities. Timber HP also makes blown in insulation and wood fiber board from these leftover softwood chips. So if this feels like the right option for your home, you could really cover a lot of ground with Timber HP's products. 
And I know you might be saying, but Christina, wood chips are not fire resistant and they actually attract pests. But Timber HP creates all their products with non-toxic borates to resist fire, pests, and moisture. So that's also very effective. And thirdly, hemp insulation. So hemp insulation is made from hemp fibers and it's not only efficient, but it also helps regulate humidity. It's a renewable non-toxic option that's making waves in the sustainable building community. Hemp Protector is doing a great job of creating cost competitive hemp bat insulation. They're definitely not the only company making awesome insulation from hemp, but they're one of my favorites. So again, link below for that. Hemp Protector is also developing a product called Plant Panels. This isn't available just yet as of 2024, but I'd really love to design with it when it's available. So what I've been talking about so far is for interior insulation, the stuff that goes in the structural cavities of our walls and roofs. But buildings also need continuous exterior insulation. This helps minimize the heat transfer and avoid thermal bridging which is what you get when you have framing that breaks up the insulation. This is especially important with highly conductive materials like metal in a structure. Exterior insulation also helps control dew points. So the dew point is the point at which the air is so saturated with water, it starts to condense on physical objects. So this often happens when there's a large difference between the indoor and the outdoor temperature. Like if it's really hot outside and it's really cold inside, we definitely want to keep that outside of our walls. Anyway, a good exterior insulation can help with all that. Along with Hempitecture's plant panels, we're seeing some high quality wood fiber board insulation companies like Timber HP, which I mentioned earlier, and Gutex in Germany. As you might've guessed, these are made with wood fiber and wax treated to resist pests, moisture, and fire. And they're excellent for a naturally based exterior insulation when we want to avoid foam products. So all these insulation options I mentioned are only the tip of the iceberg. There are a ton of other options. I just chose the, the ones with the most R value for this example. So even though I'm all about carbon smart materials, I get that sometimes spray foam might really be the best choice like in those hard to cover leaky areas around windows and doors. So if you can't avoid using spray foam, consider the two main types. There is closed cell spray foam. This has a higher R value and is great for blocking moisture, but it comes with a high carbon footprint. An open cell spray foam, it has a lower R value, but it's more eco-friendly with a lower carbon footprint and better breathability. When it comes to picking the right insulation for your project, I like to think of it as setting the stage for a performance. Just like a chef wants everything in place before starting a meal, I want to have a clear picture of what my insulation options are well before we break ground. This way I know exactly what materials we're using and can ensure they're available when we need them. And then there's no last minute scrambles or delays waiting for supplies or figuring out last minute what's happening. So here's a closer look at some key tips for choosing a sustainable insulation alternative. First things first, think about your local climate. The local building and energy codes should give you requirements of guidelines on this, but if you happen to live in a rural area with no regulation, do some research. What's the average temperature throughout the year in your area? Are there extreme highs and lows that you need to account for? If you're in a particularly humid region, that will affect your choice too. So you want insulation that will handle your specific weather conditions well and keep your home comfortable and efficient. So research the recommended insulation levels for your climate zone and just make sure that you're getting the right amount. And secondly, choose an air barrier. Like I mentioned, you need something that's both airtight and breathable or vapor permeable. A good air barrier will contribute to a healthier indoor environment and better energy efficiency. Next, you wanna select your insulation material. Check out the materials themselves. Different types of insulation have unique properties. So consider what suits your needs best. How does the material react to moisture? Is it prone to mold or mildew? What about flammability? Does it have a high fire risk? Think about how long the insulation will last in your home and whether it expands or contracts with temperature changes. 
Also look at the production process. Ideally, you want materials that are non-toxic and have a lower environmental impact. And I'm talking about the full impact over a material's entire life cycle. So pre-production, during production, during its use and after and when it winds up in the landfill. And finally, budgeting is key. This one is kind of self-explanatory and I won't get into how to plan your budget for your overall build here. So just let me know in the comments if you like me to make a video all about budgeting. If natural buildings feel overwhelming, don't worry. I actually created a sustainable materials price list and it's a fantastic resource for DIY designers and builders. It provides up-to-date pricing for natural building materials and details on where to buy them. So with this list, you'll get a comprehensive guide that can help you stay on track with your budget and make informed choices for your sustainable home. I update this price list every year. So whenever you're watching this video, there should be an up-to-date version. So I'll put a link in the description below. So looking back, spray foam insulation might have seemed like a groundbreaking choice when it first hit the market, but as we evolve towards more resilient and sustainable building practices, it's clear that our homes need to be more than just functional. They need to be kind to our planet. A truly sustainable building approach considers the long-term impact of our choices. Our homes should not only provide comfort and efficiency while we live in them, but also design with the future in mind. If we ever decide to deconstruct and return a building to nature, it should do so without causing harm. By opting for natural insulation materials, we're not just enhancing the energy efficiency of our homes, we're also making a positive contribution to the environment. If you wanna learn more about spray foam, I actually wrote a whole article on the subject in my blog. So I'll link that description below as well. You can also find links to all the resources and companies I mentioned in this video. So be sure to check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you're interested in more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss a video. I'd love to have you as a part of this community. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.